Welcome to Configuring Electronic Health Records, Implementing Clinical Decision Support. The component Configuring Electronic Health Records provides a practical experience with a laboratory component utilizing the VISTA for Education program that will address approaches to assessing, selecting, and configuring electronic health records, EHRs, to meet the specific needs of customers and end users. The objectives for implementing clinical decision support are to define and discuss clinical decision support, describe, view, and create alerts notifications in a VISTA simulation EHR environment, describe, view, and create order checks in a VISTA simulation EHR environment, describe, view, and resolve reminders in a VISTA EHR simulation environment. Describe and discuss the value of these EHR functions as clinical decision support tools. Alerts or notifications, order checks, and clinical reminders are standard functions that one would expect to find in any electronic health record. The exercises associated with this lecture provide instruction on the configuration of these three tools in order to implement clinical decision support features in an EHR. What is Clinical Decision Support, or CDS? According to the Roadmap on Clinical Decision Support from the American Medical Informatics Association, or AMIA, Clinical decision support provides clinicians, staff, patients, or other individuals with knowledge and person-specific information intelligently filtered or presented at appropriate times to enhance health and health care. There are a number of overviews of clinical decision support that are referenced on this slide. Clinical decision support systems provide information support to the clinician at the point of care and may be used pre-diagnosis, at the time of diagnosis, or post-diagnosis to improve the quality of care and promote patient safety. Why do healthcare providers need clinical decision support? One of the reasons is that healthcare is not as good as it could be, as demonstrated in many studies. Probably the best known of these studies is from McGlynn and colleagues, who sampled the medical records of nearly 7,000 adults in 12 metropolitan areas of the U.S. for 30 conditions. They found, on average, that only about 55% of care was consistent with the best known quality. Similarly, the most recent annual report of the National Committee for Quality Assurance, NCQA, which focuses on healthcare quality, showed that there continue to be gaps between the quality that is ideal and quality provided by health plans. The gaps between the average of what health plans provide and the 90th percentile of current quality measures indicate that between 49,000 and 115,000 deaths could be avoided with improved quality. $12 billion could be saved in avoidable medical costs. Additionally, the quality of care for patients with chronic disease is no better and in many ways worse in the U.S. than in other developed countries. Another reason for clinical decision support is patient safety. The well-known Institute of Medicine Errors Report, entitled To Air is Human, found that as many as 98,000 Americans die each year due to medical errors, mostly due to medication errors. Some have argued that these numbers are too high or too low, but none argue against the existence of significant safety problems in U.S. health care. Lost in the discussion about who is to blame and other related issues is that most errors are the result of faulty systems, implying that the solution lies in building better systems that identify and prevent errors rather than trying to make people smarter or punish them for errors. A quote from the late 1990s is apropos here. According to Chantler, a British physician, quote, Medicine used to be simple, ineffective, and relatively safe. Now it is complex, effective, and potentially dangerous." Unquote. Many of the early approaches to clinical decision support 
focused on the application of artificial intelligence and expert systems with the aim of improving medical diagnosis. Diagnostic decision support was a major focus of the field of biomedical informatics in its early days, the 1970s and 1980s. However, computer-aided diagnosis proved to be very difficult, and it became apparent that computers could be better used by focusing in reducing errors and improving quality. The early work provided the intellectual groundwork for techniques that are used in modern clinical decision support and shifted the focus of decision support more to therapeutic areas. With the availability of data in modern electronic health records, however, the older approaches may yet be useful in the future. This slide defines terms helpful in understanding the development of clinical decision support. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is the area of computer science concerned with building computer programs that exhibit characteristics associated with human intelligence. This field has undergone many transitions over the years and really is not a major focus of computer science anymore, although many of its techniques have been incorporated into all sorts of computer applications. Expert systems were a type of computer program developed using AI techniques that attempted to mimic human expertise, to be an expert. Decision support systems backed off from being the complete expert and attempted to play more of a supportive than independent role. Decision support is sometimes broken down into areas of diagnostic decision support, focused on aiding in the diagnosis of patients, and therapeutic decision support, focused on aiding in treatment. A great deal of work took place in the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s in diagnostic decision support. It was believed that was where medical informatics was going to have its biggest impact. In the late 1980s, however, it became apparent that the diagnostic process was too complex for computer programs and that the systems took too long in terms of time of use and really did not provide the information that clinicians truly needed. Recent developments support the idea that diagnostic decision support systems are less effective than therapeutic systems. There was a general acknowledgement of the failure of expert systems and artificial intelligence to live up to the expectations of the 1980s, not only in medicine, but in other areas. However, it is important to note that diagnostic errors still occur and cause harm to patients. So even though the systems that were developed in the earlier era did not contribute useful solutions, this problem still needs to be resolved. Currently, decision support evolved in the 1990s in tandem with the growing use of electronic health records. Rules and algorithms were actually found to be quite useful, and they are currently used in modern systems, although not in a diagnostic decision support way. Again, there was an evolution from broad-based diagnostic decision support to more narrow therapeutic decision support. A number of leaders in the field recently published a roadmap for decision support. The key pillars of decision support are having the best knowledge available to the physician when needed, making sure that there is high adoption and effective use, and continually improving the knowledge and the methods. In this segment, the focus will be on two forms that are somewhat related, reminders and alerts. What distinguishes these modern approaches is that they take advantage of the context of the electronic health record. Reminders remind clinicians to perform various actions, whereas alerts alert them to critical situations. Computer-based reminders are not a new idea, and as with diagnostic decision support, there is some older literature that represents some classic work in the field. One of the early workers in this area was Clem McDonald. He wrote a paper in the New England Journal of Medicine in 1976 talking about the non-perfectibility of man, 
which was the term he used instead of humans. He found that computer-based reminders showed some reduction in error in the process of delivering medical care. Octo Barnett, also an early worker in the field, showed that reminders for untreated streptococcal pharyngitis, also known as strep throat, led to increased use of treatment. Of course, the reason for this reminder was due to the fact that, when untreated, strep throat can progress in a very small number of cases to acute rheumatic fever. Clem McDonald did another study in 1984 showing that a paper printout of reminders to order routine preventive care resulted in increased utilization. There were some other interesting findings from these studies. One was that when prompting was removed, the behavior returned to baseline, or the previous lower level of ordering the right test or treatment. Thus it was deemed that these effects were not educational, but rather reminders to busy physicians to do what they ought to be doing. Alerts are usually used to detect and report adverse events. They are often used in the context of Computerized Physician Order Entry, CPOE and they have been successfully used in many clinical situations, such as nosocomial infections or infections that develop in the hospital, adverse drug events, preventing injurious falls, and emerging diseases or related issues like bioterrorism. There are a number of issues concerning alerts. One is, how are alerts best delivered to the clinician? Do they set off a pager? Does someone make a phone call or send an email? Controlling the number of alerts or volume is a big issue. This is now more frequently called alert fatigue. Physicians complain of alert fatigue because of the high number of alerts that are integrated into the electronic health record systems that they use. It is important to communicate the most important alerts without overloading clinicians particularly with alerts that do not require immediate action. There are also a number of medical legal issues, such as what to do when clinicians do not respond to alerts. Conversely, what should be done when physicians are depending on alerts and something is missed because the system does not appropriately generate the alerts. Another issue with alerts is how to detect the alerting condition. Obviously, it is easier to do with coded or numeric data, but it is more challenging when clinicians are relying on information in textual reports to generate the alerts. Additionally, how are alerts standardized across different systems? What exactly is CPOE? There is a website that is maintained by the research program of Joan Ash, a professor at Oregon Health and Science University, called CPOE.org. This website defines CPOE as, quote, a computer system that allows direct entry of medical orders by the person with the licensure and privileges to do so, unquote. Clinical decision support is usually viewed as an essential component of CPOE obtaining its full potential. Another term that is important to know is e-prescribing. E-prescribing is a subset of full CPOE where the ordering is limited to just prescribing. There are a number of initiatives that are focused on e-prescribing as opposed to the full spectrum of CPOE. CPOE exemplifies biomedical informatics in that it is about information and not technology. It is used at the place where clinical decision support can have the most impact, the writing of medical orders. Rosenthal commented in 1984 that the single most expensive piece of equipment in a hospital is the doctor's pen because of the orders it can write and the charges that it can generate. All of the issues that play out in CPOE implementation are those that are crucial to informatics, such as organizational structure, attention to workflow, healthcare provider autonomy, and more. Technology also becomes very important with CPOE, as systems must be usable and have very fast response times. Another best practice is the use of order sets. These streamline order entry by reducing the number of steps it takes to submit orders. 
Order sets consist of all the instructions about things like vital signs and rotating the patient and orders for tests and treatments. Order sets are usually based on a specific diagnosis or treatment that is going to be carried out. An order set may also be based on a medical specialty. When order sets are implemented, there is the ability to provide better guideline or evidence-based care, although order sets must be modifiable for local practices. There is a growing amount of experience with order sets, and the consensus is that they are best managed at the departmental level. So there should not be order sets for an entire institution, nor should there be order sets for every single individual. Ideally, Departments, such as family medicine, orthopedic surgery, etc., would communicate about consensus practices and build those into the order sets. Then a reasonable number of order sets can be maintained, and there is still the ability to override individual elements when it is appropriate to do so. This slide shows what a CPOE chest X-ray order screen might look like from the VISTA system. There are a number of quick orders in the system so that the required information can be answered quickly. Once all the information is there, the order can be entered. The lab exercises accompanying this lecture will provide the opportunity to create an order set similar to this. In the context of clinical decision support, what are the grand challenges moving forward? Sittig and other leaders in the field published a paper in 2008, and much of what they listed as grand challenges are still challenges today. One category of challenges is to improve the effectiveness of clinical decision support, CDS, intervention. This includes improving the human-computer interface, summarizing patient-level information, prioritizing and filtering recommendations to the user, combining recommendations for patients who have comorbidities, and using free text information to drive clinical decision support. They also focused on new CDS interventions, which included prioritizing CDS content, development, and implementation moving forward and mining large clinical databases to identify the areas where interventions are needed. Finally, better dissemination of existing CDS knowledge and interventions was recommended. This included disseminating best practices in the design, development, and implementation of CDS, creating architecture for sharing executable CDS modules and services, and creating Internet-accessible CDS repositories. Some have suggested that there be something along the lines of rules.gov, similar in concept to guidelines.gov, although there may be some who object to the notion of the government publishing rules. Nonetheless, these grand challenges show that much still needs to be done in clinical decision support moving forward. At this point, it is useful to quickly review the specific clinical decision support tools or functions embedded in the VISTA EHR that will be utilized in the ensuing lab exercises using the VISTA EHR simulation. A conceptual and historical framework for the CDS tools was provided earlier. These next slides will discuss them in the specific context of the VISTA EHR. Alerts or notifications furnish providers with timely feedback regarding clinical events. 
Some alerts allow the user to perform a follow-up action, while others are displayed for informational purposes. Normally, informational alerts will disappear after they are viewed. Alerts which require follow-up action, however, will not be removed until the required action is taken. Some alerts can be designated as mandatory and cannot be disabled by the users, while others can be turned on or off according to the user's needs and preferences. Mandatory alerts will normally be set as part of organizational policy and driven by research and best practices. Ideally, clinical alerts are generated from a systematic, rule-based, dynamic review of patient information from all modules of an EHR, such as laboratory, pharmacy, and scheduling. This means that alerts are real-time and are generated the instant relevant information is changed in the EHR. It also suggests that alerts should not be restricted to only certain types of information but have the potential to be driven by any information in the system. Order checking is a component of the order entry process. It is based on a system of rules which reviews orders to see if they meet predefined criteria. If the order does not meet the criteria, an electronic message is transmitted to the provider before the order is completed. Examples of basic order checks include duplicate orders, duplicate drug class orders, adverse reactions, and drug lab interactions. Order checks are real-time processes that occur during the placing of an order. Before orders are transmitted to the laboratory, pharmacy, or other areas, orders are sent through the order checking module, where the order is evaluated by an expert system against data from patient files, and an order check message is displayed. If an order check message is generated, the provider can choose to cancel the order or override the order check by entering a justification. Order checking is an important quality control mechanism built into EHR systems. Clinical decision support is provided by supplying clinicians with additional information concerning an order which may impact their decision. Clinicians are not bound by the order check recommendations, but must record a reason to override system recommendations. Clinical reminders help caregivers deliver quality patient care for both preventive health care and management of chronic diseases. Clinical reminders prompt clinicians regarding recurring events or required follow-ups. Examples of clinical reminders might include recurring tests required by patients with chronic illness or the need for immunization updates. Clinical reminders assist in the clinical decision-making process by allowing providers to view when specific tests or evaluations were performed and to track and document when care was delivered. The primary goal is to provide relevant and timely information to providers at the point of care. Now it is time to do that work with these CDS tools by working through the corresponding lab exercises. There is a lab exercise for alerts, order checks, and clinical reminders, respectively. These lab exercises are standalone activities and can be completed in any order or worked through in the order indicated. It may be useful to work through these activities more than once in order to develop the skills necessary to navigate and work with these functions of the EHR. This concludes Implementing Clinical Decision Support. In addition to the associated lab exercises, this unit defined and discussed clinical decision support described viewing and creating alerts, notifications in a VISTA simulation EHR environment, described viewing and creating order checks in a VISTA simulation EHR environment, described viewing and resolving reminders in a VISTA EHR simulation environment, and described and discussed the value of these EHR functions as clinical decision support tools. Although the lab exercises are performed in the VISTA simulation EHR system, alerts, order checks, and clinical reminders are tools that are implemented in all EHR systems. 
Understanding how to customize these functions is important for configuring an EHR to effectively implement clinical decision support features in any healthcare organization.